Foreign Minister Rao, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. So let's start off with these extraordinary scenes that we are seeing play out on the streets of Russia. People protesting, some even leaving the country, men saying they do not want to be a part of the draft. How would you assess this moment, how Putin is handling the war in Ukraine right now? Is he losing the war? Obviously, President Putin is losing the war in Ukraine. So the, his reaction to it is to uh, launch the uh, mobilization. But the mobilization doesn't seem to help him win the war because so far we witnessed the Ukrainian armed forces that defeated the Russian professional soldiers. It's very unlikely that those who are being now mobilized, those who are poorly trained, and poorly equipped are going to change the course of the war. But on the other hand, the mobilization as such can mean a breakthrough, but somewhere else, at the Russian domestic front. Because so far, the war was so popular, at least for the majority of the Russian population, up to 80 percent. And now, every Russian family will have to take their own position towards the war, knowing that their loved ones can be sent there and they can be killed there. He's losing the support of his own people, it sounds like, is what you're saying. Well, I believe this is going to be a more, a, a, a longer process. Mm. But the direction of this process, it, ha is, it, it has been already determined. We are seeing a final day of voting for these referendum that are taking place in the Russian-held territories of Ukraine. How concerned are you about a further escalation if Putin feels as though he is being backed into a corner? Legally, the uh, referendum, uh, referenda do not mean anything. You see them as a the, sham, like the United that's States right, says. Because the international community is not going to recognize the results. But nevertheless, from the military perspective, this could help Putin to justify extraordinary means to defend this conquered territories considered a part of Russia Federa Russian Federation. I want to ask you about some comments that we have heard recently, including from the National Security Advisor here in the United States, who told Chuck Todd on Sunday that there would be, quote, catastrophic consequences should Putin use nuclear weapons. The NATO Secretary General said just today there would be severe consequences. My question to you, Mr. Mr. Foreign Minister, is how should NATO respond if Putin uses nuclear weapons? NATO should respond decisively and firmly. Militarily? Should they respond militarily? To the best of our knowledge, Putin is threatening to use tactical nuclear weapons on Ukrainian soil, not to attack NATO, not to attack NATO, which, which means that NATO should respond in a conventional way, but the response should be devastating. And I suppose this is the clear message that the NATO alliance is sending to Russia right now. And just to be clear, Mr. Foreign Minister, when you say NATO should respond in a devastating way, do you mean militarily or economically with more sanctions? Quite frankly, if Putin is going to break the consensus or of five uh, permanent members of the Security Councils. All of them are nuclear powers. And so far there's a consensus that nuclear, nuclear weapons cannot be used under no, under no circumstances. So the response should be conventional. I want to ask you about this new human rights report that we are getting from the UN, recently published, detailing instances of rape and torture of children. In addition to what uh, we have seen play out, these mass graves, how should the world respond? How should the world hold Putin accountable? The world should respond in the only 
way that is left to all human moral beings. Those who are guilty of the atrocities have to be held accountable. And the international community has to join forces in order to make it clear that regardless of the outcome of the war, regardless of many other uh, uh, things and events, these, uh, those responsible are going to be brought to justice. Very quickly, my last question. Uh, Poland has taken in more refugees, at least 1.3 million, than any other country, and yet there are these reports of fatigue. Poland's also facing potentially uh, inflation, the largest possibly in all of Europe. How can you balance continuing to help the people of Ukraine while dealing with your own economic challenges? Very briefly, we in Poland have solidarity in our DNA. And this is our approach that is good for better and good times. Okay. Mr. Foreign Minister Rao, we really appreciate your joining us. I know that you are here holding high-level meetings. Thank you for stopping by to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.